Hey everyone, I'm back. Um, it's good to be back with the channel. I, I took a bit of a break away from work, away from astrophotography, uh, and I went back to my uh, to one of my passions, uh, tennis. And I spent a week at uh, Palm Spring with, uh, at the uh, Indian Wells BNP Paribas Open. And it was just awesome to watch a lot of the top professional tennis players to play and practice and you know to see how they practice on a tennis court uh, that was very inspiring for me uh, tennis wise uh, and I and I did a little bit playing myself but uh, not at the tournament. <laughs> um, but now that I'm back in the city, I am ready to do more astrophotography. And the reason why I'm talking to you guys inside, well, uh, we have a lot of rain coming up. Before I get into the meat of the video, there's one thing I want to say, and that is a massive, massive thank you to my viewers, my followers, um, my subscribers, because apparently uh, I have a thousand subscribers, and um, that's a milestone that I never thought I would reach when I started this video, when I started doing videos last December, um, because I didn't think that my videos are all that great, and I didn't think that my my photos are all that great you know there's so many people who are do who are doing much more amazing work than i am um but you guys apparently find something uh worthwhile and enjoyable from me so uh, that means a lot to me um and i will make sure to continue on and put out good content share my journey with you um share whatever knowledge that i have with you guys and you know most importantly share my failure uh there has been and there will be a lot of them so from the bottom of my heart i just want to say thank you so much and um let's get on with the video so i think we should start off with the word nebula and you know where does it come from well like most things in science it has its latin roots um and well simply put the latin word for clouds is actually nebula and the plural version of that would be nebulae so that's why we call giant clouds or giant colorful colorful clouds in the sky nebula or nebulae if there are more than one of them um, and nebulae are you know they're, they're diffused collection of dust and gas and they are usually well at least the ones that we as astrophotographers are concerned with, they are going to be visible within the visible light spectrum. Um, and they're usually, no, they're all, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna use the word usually, they're all immense in size, they're massive. And the scale that we use to measure them are in the scale of light years. So just, just, from that, that, that scale, you know that there are massive objects in the sky. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, most of the objects uh, up in a nice sky, they're, you know, if we can see them, if they're bright enough, they're actually far bigger than, you know, than what a full moon would be. Uh, so that gives you an idea of just how large these nebulae are. Um, and for us as photographer, we're really primarily concerned with three main types of nebulae uh, dark nebulae reflection nebulae 
And finally, the most popular of them all would be uh, emission nebulae. So the first kind of nebula that I'm going to talk about is actually a dark nebula. Um, and, you know, I would like to say that most of us don't deliberately, deliberately go and shoot a uh, dark nebula. Um, usually they're accompanied by either uh, a neighboring reflection nebula or, uh, or an emission nebula or sort of embedded in one of those. Um, and dark nebula, they, sh they sort of show up as a, what I would like to call a true black. Um, and the reason for that is because, well, dark nebula are really just extremely dense dust to the point where, you know, light from neighboring stars can't even pass through. So to our eyes, they show up as, uh, like I said, what I like to call true black or pitch black. Um, and one of the most famous example of a dark nebula would be the horsehead nebula. Um, at least the actual horsehead portion of it is a dark nebula. I, I think most of us are concerned with the HA uh, and the, the sort of the flame of the, uh, of the nebula, but uh, the actual horsehead portion of it is a dark nebula. Um, I, I think that's kind of neat. Um, so that's the first kind of nebula, is a dark nebula. Now, the two most famous uh, categories, or you know, the two most popular categories of uh, nebulae for as astrophotographer would be uh, reflection nebula and emission nebula. And I'll talk about reflection nebula first um, because I think they're easier to explain. Uh, what a reflection nebula is, is simply just dust in space that is reflecting neighboring starlight. So you can sort of, um, you can sort of think of a, of a, of a giant flashlight shining at something and whatever that it is illuminating, that is your reflection nebula. Um, and most of the time, there are always going to be the, the color of the neighboring star that is lighting them up. For example, when you look at uh, the very popular M45 Pleiades, it looks blue because it's all that dust is being illuminated by the, uh, by the neighboring young, bright, and massive blue stars. Um, and also another example would be uh, Rho of Yoshi that is very popular during the summertime. And that nebula is as colorful as it is because of the variety of stars that is lighting up the dust within uh, that region of space. Um, you got, you, you've got some blues over there. And of course, you've got the very iconic yellow, uh, yellow color of Rho of Yoshi that's being lit up by the big star Antares. Um, and also, if you look closely enough within Rho of Yochi, you can see some dark nebula in there. Um, and that sort of goes back to what I was saying earlier when it comes to dark nebula, that they're, they're always, you don't always like purposely go out and image a dark nebula, but they're always sort of, you know, accompanying, uh, accompanying a nearby, uh, uh, object of interest. Okay. So... Now I'm going to move on to what many people would consider as the main course of astrophotography. And that would be emission nebulae uh, because they're stunning to take. They're beautiful. Um, they're unique and they're just awesome. Um, and as the name suggests, emission nebula emits light. But how do they do that? Because they're just a collection of gases. They're not stars, so how are they emitting light? Um, and to able to explain that, I do need to talk a little bit about science and more particularly uh, chemistry. And so, and because this is a uh, this is an astrophotography channel, I'm going to be very general about this. And uh, uh, just a bit of a disclaimer: uh, I, I am not a source for. Uh, for chemistry, um, I'm not even a source for uh, astrophysics. Um, I just take pictures of the nice guy. 
uh, but I am extremely curious about the science. Um, I'm actually more qualified to talk about um, uh, cancer development, metastasis, why people age, DNA replication. Uh, I do have a background in biology, so if you're ever interested in talking about biology, uh, message me. I will be able to entertain you for hours to come. Um, but I will talk about, you know, why do emission nebula emit light? Um, and for that, let's talk about gases. Okay, so let's start by going over the basics of what an atom is. Um, you've got a nucleus in the middle, and within the nucleus, you've got neutrons and protons, and orbiting this nucleus, you've got electron. Um, now, this is a theoretical atom. So we've got one of each, uh, one proton, one neutron, and one electron, and everything is balanced out. Um, and when you see an electron orbiting the low energy orbit or the lowest energy orbit, it is referred to as the ground state. Later on, um, when I start talking about, you know, Adam being excited, I'm going to refer that to the excited state, but I'll, I'll remind you guys. Um, and one last reminder before I move on is that um, atoms in space are actually three-dimensional objects. We are simply using a two-dimensional model to depict what happens to a model, to, a, to an atom. So um, these orbits are not actually circular lines, as you see here, but instead uh, large empty space that scientists think would likely find this particular electron in. Um, so just remember that atoms are uh, empty space of three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional structure, not this you know two-dimensional flat disk that I'm trying to show here. So let's talk about the hydrogen atom. Um, within this nucleus, you've got one proton and no neutron, and you've got one electron orbiting the uh, the nucleus. And as you can see here, because this electron is at the lowest, the lowest energy orbit, it is in this ground state. However, hydrogen being the most abundant gas in the universe is always being bombarded by electromagnetic radiation, AKA light from stars. And you know, stars can emit visible light, but they can also emit higher energy light in the form of ultraviolet and x-rays. And when these, uh, when these light collide with an atom, the atom can actually absorb some of this light as a source of energy. And if that light coming in is energetic enough, it would actually excite the electron to a higher energy orbit. Once this electron is in the higher energy orbit, it is an excited electron and this whole atom as a whole becomes and it becomes the excited state. However, this high energy orbit is actually not stable and the electron does not want to be there any longer than it has to be. So it actually wants to come back down to this lower energy orbit. Well, how does it do that? In order to come back down to this lower energy orbit, it needs to have a way to lose the energy that it gained from the light that it, that it absorbed. How does it do that? Well, this is accomplished by giving off a photon. And in the case of hydrogen, uh, it's actually in space, it's actually molecular hydrogen uh, where two hydrogen atoms are bonded together. Um, and when it loses energy from this higher energy level back down to its lower energy, energy level, it gives off a photon with a wavelength of about 656 nanometers. Well, guess what? This 656 nanometers is the red that we see and that our camera sensor picks up. And this is what happens when an, when an excited atom comes back down to a ground state. And in the case of hydrogen atom, it gives off a photon at about 656 nanometers. Now that the atom is back down to its ground state, there are going to be more electromagnetic radiation 
coming in and bombarding the atom. Now that it's back in the ground state, it's actually ready to be excited by uh, the light that are coming in and it's ready to go back to a higher energy level and then lose that energy and emit a photon. Okay, so I think we're just about done here. Hopefully you learned something about the different types of nebulae. Um, and I did this video because, well, you know, with winter coming up, there's going to be a ton of awesome objects up there for the winter season. And a lot of them, if not all of them, are going to be emission nebulae. Um, so hopefully, you know, you were able to learn something and just make the most out of those cold, dark, long nights where, you know, you can get hours and hours of data on your favorite object. Um, I know I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the California Nebula. I'm looking forward to Orion. Uh, I'm looking forward to everything along Cassiopeia. Oh man, there are just so many objects up there. So um, yeah, I hope you found this useful. And I hope that, not that I want the rain to stop because you know, California, we need the rain to fight off the wildfire and help with the drought. But I hope that, you know, the next time you watch this, you watch this, uh, this channel, I'm imaging something. Uh, I don't know what, but hopefully I'm back out there again. And, um, you know, welcome back to the channel. And uh, with that, I will say, I wish you all good health and clear skies, everybody. Take care. Bye.